So I thought it would be fun today to uh, take a look at a game that was essentially designed by my five-year-old daughter. <laughs> so so uh, I basically was talking to her because she was noticing that I was working on my other game, the, you know, the goth girl, Metro Metroidvania, and she thinks that's kind of cool, but uh, she's not, it doesn't uh, really appeal fully to all of her interests as a, you know, five-year-old. So I was like, okay, well, if you're going to design a game, what would it be like? And she said, Angry Birds. Of course. So a physics game. Okay, that's cool because it gives me an excuse to try physics, uh, the actual physics engine in creating a physics game in Game Maker Studio 2. But uh, <laughs> then I asked for details and she talked about cupcakes and unicorns and rainbows and farting. So this is essentially kind of like the, the first test screen, I guess, or the test level where I'm trying to incorporate some of her ideas. So it's physics. Uh, I, originally I was planning to do like a more literal Angry Birds where you threw the unicorn at a bunch of cupcakes or something like that, but I've actually turned it into something that's closer to pinball in its, uh, in its functioning. So when it starts, the unicorn just falls and it has a, a pretty good level of bounciness um, set in uh, Game Maker Studio. It's actually called, um, I forget what it's called. Let's double check. Let's check the physics settings. So I actually have physics uh, turned on for both the room and for the, the, all the items. And I'll talk about some weird thing I discovered about uh, Game Maker Studio. So if you've been watching my other videos and whatnot, yeah, I went back to Unity temporarily and was playing around with that. And Unity is fun, especially when you include Playmaker, which is what which is a visual scripting language effectively um, using, uh, it's basically what the Hollow Team Cherry who created Hollow Knight used to create Hollow Knight. And it was kind of fun to work with, but I still ran into issues with Unity. It just, Unity is not pleasant to work with. So I found myself coming back to Game Maker and I wanted to make sure that it, I could do a physics game because I knew it had a physics engine, but I was like, Ugh, I don't know what this, if this is good. So I did go ahead, use physics, set the, uh, you know, just you can actually set the room physics. You turn it on and you can set the gravity. I have it at 40 because I want things to have weight at its default value, which I think is 10. Um, it it just doesn't, things don't feel heavy. They don't see, fall like I feel like they should in real life. And I noticed that with all physics engines. Like maybe it's technically correct, but it doesn't feel like right. That translation doesn't seem to really work out for me anyway. So I went ahead and turned physics on for all the objects that are affected by physics and collisions. And you can go into physics here and you can actually uh, set density. Restitution is its bounciness. So the higher you make this number, the bouncier it becomes. So I have it set to one. It defaults to 0 0.01, I think. So this is significantly more bouncy than the default. Uh, make sure you set collision group don't keep it at zero because i made that mistake because things won't collide and everything that's going to collide with each other do one now in this game everything collides with everything else um linear dampen dampening and angular dampening basically it's it's uh effectively preventing it, it's the opposite of sort of that that uh the velocity it helps hamper that it's kind of like friction and i i really raised the angular dampening and i may increase it more because that prevented uh the the object the unicorn object from spinning it wanted to spin a lot every time it bounced uh so i reduced so i increased it significantly and i may increase it more so it doesn't because it still spins a bit more than i want um and friction is the actual friction when it rubs against objects so um and i also let's talk about the collision shape so the collision shape's a little weird you can only have convex uh yes convex shapes and you only get up to, I think, eight points. So you can't do a perfect representation. The actual collision mask on the sprites for my objects is pixel perfect. So I went ahead and did that. It doesn't seem to affect performance. Again, this isn't a big game with, I'm not, well, you actually saw the screen. I've had significantly more objects on the screen and the physics were very slow. I mean, it seems to me we're not slow, which is what I was afraid of, that the, the physics for the Game Maker 2 Studio were going to be incredibly slow. So in fact, it wasn't. But you can't do a really good physics collision shape. But I, I, I went with what made sense. Like, I actually wanted some of this to not be part of the collision physics because it would get in the way of the other sort of standard collision. Uh, and I'll actually show you what that, look like, that looks like. So 
I was running into an issue. Let's take a look at the sprite because uh, I have it match sprite. So I have it set to precise, and as you can see, the the actual collision space is exactly the shape of the unicorn. So uh, that was necessary, and it was necessary to bring the collision uh, mass, uh, excuse me, collision shape, a fixture, I believe they call it in Game Maker Studio. I had to make that much smaller, and that's so when the 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 uh, the unicorn hits things that I need to calculate and and do non-physics based interactions like deleting causing the the cupcake to disappear i needed some space because when i tried to make the physics collision shape pretty much exactly the same size and in shape as the the uh the sprite the masking collision masking it um it never fired the actual normal collision events it only did the physics ones so that was really annoying and i'm sure there's a way you can work with the physics ones to also do those things but i'm actually using both uh because it's just it seemed like a lot more uh because they did originally have some checking physics collision interactions and trying to do um more gamey things with that like making the cupcakes disappear on impact but it wasn't consistent um so this was a little bit more consistent it's still a little inconsistent because sometimes the unicorn will bounce against a cupcake and not destroy it like it 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 recognizes the collision shape but not the actual like uh the 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 collision mass the, the normal collision so uh the programmatic collisions so that's a little but that actually turned out okay because sometimes the you know the unicorn won't destroy a cupcake immediately like if it's just a a, a really quick touch sometimes it'll make the cupcake go flying and i actually like that because it's a little bit more realistic i think it's a good balance and uh so that was interesting learning the physics but in general it's it seems to run pretty well so i'm I, that's what i was afraid of because i had read online that game maker studio physics is incredibly slow but that must have been a much older version because i was pretty impressed this has uh, run very very smoothly and i've even had tons of objects on the screen i don't even have ha it probably won't have as many as you see right here especially not the ones that do physics Come on, come on. It's being super slow. But this actually runs pretty good. Now, keep in mind, I have a ton of things running in the background, and including when I stream, it always slows things down because uh, OBS requires a huge amount of memory, and my computer's not the most amazing thing in the world. Um, so what I have it now is uh, when you click the screen, it causes the unicorn to fart and go flying in the opposite direction of your cursor. Hopefully you can see my cursor there. So I've put it down here. Shoots the the unicorn in that direction and that's basically how you control it and i'm probably going to have unlimited fart power lily wants unlimited fart power so she can make the unicorn fart as much as possible but i also considered it limited like you had to like every time you got a cupcake you got a little bit more so you constantly had a we're going under a threat of running out but it may make this game less challenging it may literally be made for five-year-old since it's being designed by a five-year-old which I think is okay, because again, this is a good practice for me to learn the physics of Game Maker Studio. It's a nice, simple game that will more than, more than likely lead me to a finished product that I can actually put out there and publish. But I am going to have some challenge. Like, I'm going to have a bunch of levels, but I'm probably going to keep it at a level that my daughter can more or less resolve by herself. So as you can see, the bounciness does... Uh, the, the kinetic energy is lost with the bounces. Um, if you have the bounciness really high, this unicorn will go flying forever. I, used, I had the bouncy, uh, bounciness up immensely. So let's take a look at the level that I have. So as you can see, I'm using this quote-unquote ground object, uh, and I've basically just surrounded it. You can I only have it on screen for the bottom because I want that to look like the ground, but I've off screen I have these other ones just to act as bumpers to keep bounds to keep the unicorn bouncing back into into the scene so it doesn't go flying off into you know infinity the dark void of space but the interesting thing about what i find a little bit annoying about um game maker studio physics is that they don't unlike unity they don't have an option for an object to be to ignore gravity so basically if you create an object and put it you give it physics and your room has physics enabled, everything will want to be affected by gravity and fall. So there's no obvious like weighted, or at least it wasn't obvious initially. Uh, so there's a few things you can do. So there's actually two problems with that. One, you can't 
have it ignore gravity. You can't have it ignore, you know, receiving kinetic energy after a bounce. There's no obvious switch for that. For example, I, w I don't want this ground to fall to gravity, fall down, nor do I want the unicorn to hit it or all these cupcakes to hit it and then it slowly move. Like in space, if something slams into something, it slowly floats away. And that's what was happening. So I had to do a couple of little tricks here. So the first is you want to set your density to zero, which is uh, basically infinite. It basically zero means infinite density. So it makes it the most dense thing on Earth. On in existence. So basically that's how you prevent it from receiving kinetic energy from something. Because when the unicorn that has a density of, I don't know, one or whatever, bumps into it, the unicorn gets all the, and basically gets all the energy back to it. The ground is unaffected or an object with a zero density. So that was awesome. But that only solves the object bumping into it issue. The other issue of gravity itself requires a little bit of a workaround. So in the step, I basically have a force that is count that goes counter so basically this applies a force to every one of those ground objects those green objects to push it up against gravity and i have this set to the opposite negative one and it's just done like that for clarity written like that uh times you know times the other positions etc cetera, etc cetera. i mean excuse me not times the other positions times the mass in in the positions set uh the physics positions x y and set uh but so I have the 40 comes from the fact that I have the Y gravity 40. So 40 force down. So basically it's just applying a 40 up force to counteract the 40 down force. Hopefully that makes sense. And I believe this is the Newtons. So that's, that's basically all there is to it. And then the other things in the, the level are basically various kinds of bouncies like this, these uh, bumpers, like pin, uh, pinball bumpers are very similar. They're not affected by gravity. I think I have them set to a density of zero. Let's double check that. Yes, I do. And the restitution is 100 because I want them to be super duper bouncy because I basically want anything that hits them to go flying. Um, but yeah, that's all there is to this game. And to be quite honest, you know, I'm going to add more. I'm thinking about having like, um, you know, different walls that can be broken. So you need to bash your unicorn into it in multiple times. Power ups that like split your unicorn into multiple unicorns. Um, you know, very typical sort of like pinball-y things, I guess, but also angry birdie things angry birdie things um so that there's that combination it's that uh and i think this will be a fun game like I, I don't expect it to sell billions or at all but i think it'll be a fun project my daughter will love it which is the most important thing because this is i'm trying to get her interested in in uh developing games as well she loves playing video games with me i want her to interest in, develop, in developing them you know i've spent my whole life writing code um not specifically cool things like games but other things uh less in, intriguing things like um you know hospital software but uh you know if nothing else if it's just a project to get her interest in it and something that is fun for her awesome that's all it needs to be I just wanted to say that real quick. Um, if you're new to my channel, please be sure to subscribe. Uh, new to my YouTube channel, please be sure to subscribe. If you're new to my Twitch channel, I'd really appreciate a follow. Uh, it means certainly means a lot to me. Um, so in any case, thank you so much for watching. And as always, thank you for joining me on this journey.